This is Tade Pogaccia's Colnago V4RS. Now, it is without doubt the most tricked out, exciting bike that I have found here at the Tour de France in 2023. Normally, a team is beholden to their sponsors. All the riders are using identical tried and tested kit. But here, Pogaccia and his mechanics have gone to town, seemingly in an effort to make this bike as light as possible. How light? I will tell you at the end. Now then, as mentioned, this is a Colnago V4RS. Now he was actually racing this very same frame set last year, but it was called the Prototipo. It hadn't officially been released yet. When we did finally find out all the details, it was, as you might imagine, faster, lighter, and stiffer, according to Colnago, and quite significantly faster as well, they said. Now, apart from that and the Prologo saddle, everything else on this bike is different to last year's race bike. So the group set has gone from Campagnolo to Shimano Dura-Ace, but you'll see the quest for lightweight starts with the chain rings. These are carbon tie chain rings. And actually what's really cool is they've 3D printed the chain ring bolt covers there so that they get to maintain the aesthetic of the Dura-Ace crank set. Otherwise, when you don't use a Shimano chain ring, you end up with this horrible gap there. So I'm very glad they have done that. They've also got carbon tie rotors on here instead of the stock Durace ones. So they are super light. I think 76 grams for that 140 mil rotor at the back. So a significant weight saving there as well. Despite the non-standard chain rings, the gear ratios are very much Shimano standard. So 54-40, and then also, although Tade will change this cassette undoubtedly during the race, currently he's got an 11 to 30 on there. The other point to note, he's also using a Shimano power meter on there. So that's got strain gauges integrated into both cranks to give dual-sided measurement. Those cranks have got shorter from last year. He was running 172.5s, now he's running 170s. And that's not the only thing that's changed about his position. My colleague from GCN Espanol, Sebas, had his tape measure out earlier, and he said that the distance from the tip of the saddle to the bars has shortened by two centimeters. And even just looking at that seat, it has rammed right forward. It seems like Pagaccia has gone way forward on his bike in a quest potentially for more aerodynamics or more power output. We don't know, unfortunately. Now, as mentioned, the Prologo saddle continues from last year, custom for today. He's got his own design on the top. This seat post, though, is also custom. It's from a Spanish brand called Darimo. And again, it's a quest for lighter weight. So replacing the standard Colnago one, and it's very custom because it's a D-shaped seat post. So uh, they've had to make it bespoke for this bike. Goodness knows how much expense. All right, thanks dude. Forgot the bottles, didn't I? Elite Superfly, again, weight saving measure, the lightest bottles in the Pro Peloton and uh, a nod to the uh, nutrition sponsor N of it there as well. Right, round at the front of the bike, there's a little bit more 3D printed trickery. The headset cap here, is custom. I would imagine that's to get those bars just a fraction lower for him. If you're going to move your position forward two centimeters, you're going to want to go lower, that's for sure. Now, another new partner for the team this year is Envy, and I'm going to start with this incredible one piece aero cockpit. Super narrow as well, so he's gone narrow with his bars, 36 centimeters, and his shifters are turned in. I think we all remember that trademark aero silhouette as he soloed to victory at the Tour of Flanders. That is why, turned in shifters and a narrow cockpit. Envy also, as you can see, supply the wheels. Currently on here, he's got the SES 4.5s. Now, these were a bit of a trailblazer back in the day. They were the first to go to 25 millimeter wide internal. And it means that these 28 millimeter wide Continental GP5000 tires plump up to nearly 30 millimeters wide. I mean, they are absolutely vast, but as we know, wider is faster. And with these wide rims on there as well, they're gonna maintain almost all the aerodynamic properties as well. Now, for the nerds out there, these rims are also different front and back. So 50 mil deep up front, 55 millimeters deep at the back. Now, 
Lastly, up here, we've also got a Wahoo head unit. Tade uses the element bolts, so the smaller of the two Wahoo elements. Last couple of points to note, we've got more 3D printing goodness here with the number holder. Uh, we've also got a ceramic speed bottom bracket, T47 standard on this bike. So that is a threaded bottom bracket, but a larger diameter. That is cool, isn't it? Like really cool. So much stuff going on. So much thought has gone into it. Undoubtedly, you will want to hear that free hub sound check. Oh. oh, and I did promise you the weight, didn't I? So uh, yeah, his number one bike is apparently 6.9 kilos. His number two bike, ever so slightly heavier, we measured it at seven kilos. And if you're wondering what this bike is, it's his number four bike. I was just about to film with number two bike and then it was needed to go on a training ride with him. And when I asked the mechanic whether there was a spare, he said, yes, you can have three, four, five or six. So. Uh, Imagine having six bikes this tricked out at your disposal. Incredible, isn't it? Right, here we go. I have a feeling this one's going to be loud. Whoa! Ho -ho. Outrageous. Grim. Sounds like an F1 car, doesn't it? Amazing. Oh, what a pleasure it is to check over a bike like this. Make sure you give the video a big thumbs up. Get involved in the comment section as well. A lot to talk about on this bike. That's absolutely for sure. Make sure you subscribe to GCN Tech if you want to see more pro bikes from the Tour de France Peloton 2023. We've got loads coming up on the channel for you, so don't miss one. Click uh, that bell icon when you subscribe, and therefore you get a notification.